To live on sunlight and wind forever for free is a vision that sounds almost too good to be true. We believe actually it is possible, but in order to understand how it works and what needs to be done, we need to deep dive a bit more into the fundamentals of renewable energy. And if you look at renewable energy, it is amazing. Why? Because wind and sunlight in itself is available all over across the globe. It is free of charge. So if you compare, for example, other primary energy sources like oil, coal, gas, they are, of course, all producing CO2, but also you have to take them out of the soil, you have to transport them, you have to refine them, you have to pay them even before they are reaching the generator, which is the power plant, where it's being burned and damaging our atmosphere to actually produce electricity. So you do not have all of that when it comes to wind and sun. It's transported for free, it is produced for free, and it's available almost everywhere on the globe. So from that perspective, living on sunlight and wind forever for free seems to be possible. If you now look at the cost of actually building generators to harvest the free primary energy of solar and wind, it's also pretty amazing. Because if you are investing in a solar module that produces electricity, or if you are investing in a windmill that is also producing electricity out of wind, the awesome thing is you're writing off the investment or you're amortizing the investment against the cost of fossil electricity. So within less than 10 years, a windmill, but also a solar module, has entirely amortized against the cost of fossils, even if you do not include the cost of climate change. So renewables are amazing because primary energy is for free and the generators are being paid by old fossil which is amazing. And then if you look at those generators, they will be around for decades. If you look at a solar module, solar modules have been actually developed and designed to be energy sources in space for decades under freezing temperatures. So a modern solar module can actually survive and generate electricity up to 40, 50 years. The same applies to windmills. Even a windmill that has to be exchanged on the turbine side after 10, 15, 20 years, the general setup of having the site prepared and just repowering the generator will produce electricity over the next decades at almost two or one cent per kilowatt hour. So it is true that renewables are amortizing themselves against fossils. It is true that after they have been amortized, they are producing electricity mainly or almost for free. So all of that is happening already today. However, one of the big problems about renewables is, and that is very important to understand, is they are not available whenever we need them. Just to understand the magnitude of that problem is easy by comparing the total hours of a year to their production availability. We have 8,700 hours in a year. And only in 2,500 of them, we have wind and solar. Solar is contributing about 1,000 hours, obviously not at night, and obviously not in the winter time so much. And wind is contributing only 2,000 operating hours per year, and these 2,000 operating hours are mainly or more likely in the winter and less likely in the summertime. So you see that even if you put those capacities together, because they're also overlapping a bit, you only get to a maximum of 2,500 operating hours in Central and Northern Europe or in Northern America. So the problem is in the other 75% of all hours of a year, you do not have any production available. And this is where the criticism is coming in and this is where fossil companies are still positioning their narrative that renewable energies are nice and they are also cheap, but they can never really replace base load and they can never really replace fossil fuels. And we looked at this problem and we believe they are wrong because the main change that we think needs to happen to live on wind and sunlight forever for free is to actually have the consumption follow those production windows. And if you remember that wind is rather stronger in the winter times while solar is rather stronger in the summer times, then you also understand that we already have some coverage seasonal of these free capacities. And if you now look at the problem of 
how to solve and overcome the volatility, we looked at what we call flexible loads. First of all, you need to understand what a load is. <laughs> a load is any kind of electric consumer. So it could be a TV, it could be a heat pump, it could be a pool pump, it could be an electric car. So anything that is using electricity is a load. If you can control these loads, you can start to switch them in windows where actually you have production of wind and solar. And in order to have that availability, they need to be flexible. So I give you an example. A car stands 22 hours a day at least, even more. It only needs about 100 to 200 kilometers range per week. So it's very easy to change the point of charging within an entire week, maybe even weeks. You can optimize and you have flexibility when you actually load. The same applies for a heat pump. A heat pump only starts operating 2,000 hours a year to produce heat. Same with the air condition. Why? Because they actually are following a temperature measure. And once the temperature measure is actually reached, they start production. However, you can optimize also that timing in the day, but also in the week, and you have flexible loads. So if you now look at what's needed to be powered, the heat pump needs 2,000 hours a year. An electric car, if you drive 20,000 miles per year, needs only 400 hours of charging. So you remember, we had 2,000 to 2,500 hours all over the year available of very, very affordable electricity. So you can actually shift the electric car very easily into those time windows. And with the heat pump, it's a bit more difficult because you simply have more operating hours. This is very similar with HVAC and air conditioning. So in the end, what we do at 1,5 is we are connecting all of these assets to an energy management system we call Heartbeat. And it actually has access to the APIs of each system and can actually optimize any flexible load to the best and most effective time window of operation. So for example, if your solar system is producing electricity during the day and it's already written off and paid by fossil because actually you amortize against grid electricity, then we would try to take those flexible loads like a heat pump or a charge point and actually have them operate within the capacity of your own solar panel. Also, if that's not sufficient, we are going directly towards the electricity exchange and we are looking when there is large wind coming into the grid, so large volumes of wind electricity, the electricity price at the electricity exchange is falling and then this system actually is helping us to not only put flexible loads into the production window of wind, but also our customers are capable of reducing the procurement cost for electricity. Why? Because renewable energies, they always produce all together. So if there's wind, every wind generator produces electricity. If there's sun, every solar generator produces electricity. This leads to a situation where there is an overproduction and the prices are actually coming down. So it is already possible today to move flexible loads into the windows of wind and sunlight. Sunlight and wind electricity is being amortized against fossil fuels today without a problem. And afterwards, they are producing at almost zero cost electricity. So living on sunlight and wind forever for free is possible. However, you need to be fast. You need to do it in time. We need to change from fossil fuels very, very fast in order to prevent the worst climate crisis ever. In order to be successful, you need to bring decentral production assets, so solar systems, but also windmills, all across the globe and in every building. And you also need to bring the decentralized flexible assets, electric cars, heat pumps, HVACs, all of them need to be deployed to actually replace oil heatings, gas heatings, coal heatings even that are still around. And then they need to be connected into one system because if we do not connect those assets, they will never overcome the main problem of renewables, which is that consumption needs to follow production and not the other way around.